Okay, so everybody has a handout for chapter 17, right? Very good. We are going to talk about contract verbs. Contract verbs. <coughs> the discussion that Mounts gives you is found beginning on page 139. 139. So if you want to open your Mounts textbooks to 139, that would be terrific uh, as well. So we can uh, look sort of back and forth. All right. So what is a contract verb? A contract verb is a verb whose stem ends with one of three contract what? Vowels. That's right. One of three contract vowels. There are three contract vowels that we will be dealing with. They are the vowels alpha, epsilon, and nope, not alpha, omicron. There we go. So alpha, epsilon, and omicron. So these are the, uh, the, the contract vowels. Okay. Now when I say a verb whose stem ends with one of three contract vowels, I'm not talking about a verb that ends with one of these. For example, you've learned the verb luo and you've got um, um, actually you haven't come to the uh, imperfect but we're going to eventually meet a verb form like this elue he was loosing okay that verb form ends with an epsilon doesn't it but that is not what we're talking about. We're talking about a stem, a verb stem. Verb stems always have something that connects after them to create the real verb form that you see in real live Greek. Okay? And uh, so this epsilon here that we're seeing is not part of the stem. Lu is the stem. Okay? And that ends with an upsilon. So that's not a contract verb. Okay? So my contract verbs end with... Um, Alpha, Epsilon, or Omicron in their stem. So our most, well, I guess the most commonly used contract verb that, that we'll, be, we'll be talking about here as we illustrate the, uh, the contract verbs in our chapters going forward, because we're going to meet contract verbs in all the tenses, is one like this, agapa. Okay? That is the, the stem of the verb agapao, to love. To love. So agapa is the stem, and notice that the stem ends with an alpha here, okay? And then we're going to add things to that stem to create the rest of the verb form. Now the problem here is that contract vowels will be followed by connecting vowels, which then are followed by personal endings, right? And when the contract vowel, the alpha, epsilon, or omicron, interact with a connecting vowel, which will be omicron or epsilon, then we're going to have something called contraction. These two vowels will come together and they will contract and become another vowel. Um, uh, usually we're going to see a diphthong. Aside from the contractions occurring though, before these personal endings, everything else, and this is important, everything else is normal about contract verbs. So that's good. So the first thing we want to do in this chapter is talk about what those contractions are, and then we'll look at how they occur in real live Greek verbs when these uh, con contract vowels interact with the connecting vowels. So, okay, so uh, there are going to be five important rules. These are the ones that Mounts ask you to memorize, and they're the ones that I ask you to memorize. Some of them you've actually seen before. So these are the big five, all right? Uh, I, I, I like to specify first which vowels are coming together and then show you what they produce. And this is actually a little bit different than Mounts. What Mounts likes to do is he likes to start with what the product is and then tell you where they came from, okay? Um, <clears throat> so... Let's, uh, let's start with what vowels come together, and then we'll see what the actual resultant contraction is. Uh, when omicron meets epsilon, they, um, they have a baby, okay? 
and you know contractions occur, right? <laughs> okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, so. Uh, what, what's great is that it's going to be the same baby. These, these are going to be triplets, okay? <laughs> the same as when epsilon and omicron meet and when omicron and omicron meet. So anytime any of these three meet, they, they all become the same thing. They become ooh. Okay, they become the diphthong ooh. Isn't that great? Three different things can produce the same child, the same contraction. All right, so omicron epsilon becomes ooh. Epsilon, Omicron, ooh. So basically, any order. Epsilon and Omicron, doesn't matter what order they come in. They become ooh when they come together. And then, Omicron, Omicron, which if you were, you know, pronouncing that, you, you might go ooh, right? <laughs> and it becomes ooh in Greek. When everybody sees a baby, they go ooh. All right, so, so there you go. Now, um, what are, are some examples of situations where we see this? Well, let, let's take a verb like poiao. Okay, poiao has the stem poia, and then, the, so that the epsilon is my, my contract vowel. And then let's say we want to say we poia. Poia means to do, so we do. I gotta add the omicron and the man for we, and what's gonna happen? I've got an epsilon and an omicron coming together. What are they going to produce? They're going to produce omicron epsilon. Okay, so we will change that to the diphthong, omicron epsilon, poiumen, poiumen, and that's we do or we are doing. Okay, so that's just an example of when you would see a contraction happen. Okay. The second contraction is when epsilon and epsilon come together. What happens when these two vowels meet? They become a diphthong, epsilon iota. So they become a, a, okay? Let's take a look at an example. Again, poi e is the verb stem for to do. And if we want to say you, second person plural, are doing, we want to add the personal ending tab, but we need to add a connecting vowel. And the connecting vowel and the epsilon here are going to contract. And so what do they become? They become epsilon iota, right? So there, there, oops. So poi a ta, poi a ta, and that's not supposed to be dotted. I used to kill you guys for dotting your iotas in first semester <laughs> Greek, didn't I? All right, so poi a ta, so you all are doing. Okay, so just, just stop and think about this for a moment. You might be going, oh, Dr. Marshall, Dr. Marshall, this is killing me. Contractions, really? Last chapter was really hard. But the reality is that you actually could parse these two verb forms I just showed you by looking at the personal endings, couldn't you? You don't really have to know what's going on with these contractions if you know the personal endings. Men is first person plural. Te is second person plural, you see. So, so it's not too hard to parse these forms even when there's contraction. Question? When yes. Yes, we're going to see that in just a minute, but yes, you'll be seeing circumflexes over those diphthongs. Now, uh, just, just as a reminder, when you have a diphthong, where do accent marks, breathing marks, and the like, where do those occur? On the first or the second vowel of a diphthong? Always on the second. Always on the second. So if I put my diphthong, uh, or my circumflex on the diphthong, it's going to be over the upsilon here, poiumen. Right, poiete, you see. All right, next, uh, we have alpha with, uh, with omicron. That is going to produce an omega. So let's jot that down here. And here's the deal with, um, here's the deal with, with the third set 
it's really Omicron and Omega plus anything. Okay? Omicron or Omega plus anything in any order produces Omega, except for up in number one, right? We, we do have some Omicrons up there. So aside from those, they produce Omega. So what we're going to see in our actual verb forms is the Alpha and the Omicron coming together. Uh, case in point, let's jot this, this one down. Agapa is the stem for love. And if I want to say we love, I'm going to add a men. Okay? Alpha, Omicron will contract. What do they become? They become Omega. Okay? Omega. We'll make it nice and big because it's Omega. Big O, right? And of course, I will see a circumflex there. So Agapomen. Agapomen. All right, let's look at number four. The fourth big rule for contractions is what happens when alpha and epsilon come together. Alpha and epsilon come together and they are going to form an alpha. Now let me ask you a question. If this is a contraction, and if we're going to see circumflex over this, uh, what can you tell me about the alpha here? Uh, it could get an iota subscript, but that would be indicative of what I'm trying to get you to think of before, that it's long. Because remember, alpha could be long alpha or short alpha, right? But when I get a contraction that becomes alpha, that alpha is a long alpha, okay? It's a long alpha. I cannot put a circumflex over a short vowel. So if you ever see a circumflex <coughs> over an alpha, it's long, right? You remember, those, those accent marks really were indicative of, of pitch. Rising pitch, the acute. Yes, okay. right, acute. Falling pitch was grave. And then what was the circumflex? It was rising falling. <coughs> Okay, you got to have a long vowel, got to hold it long enough to be able to go up and down with it. Okay, so circumflex is always over a long vowel. And um, so, so, uh, so that may not look like a really great contraction, but that is, okay, the alpha is long. If you had a Greek microscope, you could really zero in on there and you'd see it's really a, a long alpha. Okay, so let's take a look at uh, an example here. How about we... Excuse me, you love, you plural. Agapa, <coughs> and then I have my connecting vowel, eh, te, alpha and epsilon. Right, that's what we got. This is going to become a long alpha. Okay, agapate, agapate. So y'all love, y'all love. All right, and then... The, uh, the last one is uh, epsilon followed by an alpha. It's the exact opposite of uh, number four. And when that happens, then the, uh, the contraction that results is an epsilon that has lengthened, okay? And uh, what is a lengthened epsilon called? An eta, okay? An eta is a lengthened epsilon. So um, I, I think it's Mal who talks this way, and I think it's really um, memorable. Uh, with four and five, the issue is who got there first. Whoever gets there first wins. If the alpha gets there before the epsilon, then the alpha wins and becomes a long alpha, which is written like an alpha. If the epsilon gets there before the alpha, the epsilon wins, and the contraction is a long <coughs> epsilon, which is an eta. Okay? So whichever one's there first becomes the long version of what's there first in these two. Question? No. Okay. All right. So uh, our, our, uh, our example here is from uh, Poi SI. I don't think this is a form you've learned yet. 
because it's got a middle passive ending. We haven't learned middle passive endings, have we? I have other classes that have. So, so poi, eh, psi. What happens here is that the epsilon and the alpha uh, are uh, sandwiching the sigma. So this sigma is what's called intervocalic. It's between two vowels. And in Greek, intervocalic sigma likes to fall into Hades. Okay? It will drop out. And when it disappears, the resultant epsilon alpha are going to do this contraction. Okay? So what will happen? Epsilon alpha will become eta. See how big that eta is? And then the iota that was hanging out at the end is going to subscript. And so it, it becomes an iota subscript under the eta. Pretty exciting, huh? Yeah, the galactic sigma. Yeah, he has it going up, don't I? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm sort of morose, and I, I like to view things as falling into Sheol. So, okay, yeah. Either way, see, half full, half empty, right? All right, good. So that's uh, that's the big five. You 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 are going to see these contractions over and over and over again, and so it'll be very good for you. To, uh, to memorize these, to really commit them to your heart. Okay? Move on. Okay, so there's just a couple other odds and ends on contractions that Mount discusses on page 142. Uh, one miscellaneous contraction is when Omicron meets Epsilon and Iota. Okay? Omicron can meet Epsilon and Iota. And, and when it does, it's, uh, it's going to just become Omicron Iota. <coughs> Omicron Iota. So A A becomes Oi. A A becomes Oi. Okay. So play Ra plus Ace for U, second, second singular, right? This is second singular. Uh, the Omicron is going to interact with the epsilon iota here, and this is going to contract to omicron iota. Okay, so we're going to get play Royce. Play Royce with that circumflex there. You are filling, or you are fulfilling. Okay, <clears throat> you could say that to your spouse. Honey, you are fulfilling. I don't think it means that. All right, and then um, we do uh, have some uh, rules about diphthongs. When these uh, contract vowels connect with diphthongs, um, what are some other contractions that, that we see? Uh, if we have an epsilon meeting an epsilon iota diphthong, or an omicron meeting an omicron epsilon diphthong, you see what's, what's similar about these two is that the, the, the vowel that is interacting with the diphthong is identical to the first member of the diphthong in both cases. And when that happens, Greek simplifies. That is to say, one of the doubled vowels will drop out. Okay? One of the doubled vowels will drop out, and you're left with, with the, uh, the resulting letters. So uh, epsilon plus epsilon iota becomes just epsilon iota. And omicron plus the diphthong omicron epsilon drops one of the omicrons, and it becomes omicron epsilon. All right, so uh, an example here. We get uh, poi a eh, to do or make plus epsilon iota sigma. So I've got my epsilon contract vowel, my epsilon iota diphthong. These are going to simplify, right? So basically one of these will fall out and this will become long, poi ace. So that's what you get, poi ace. So we'll get rid of that. Okay, and then if we have uh, a situation where 
uh, we have uh, two vowels that are different, uh, then uh, we, we, we can track them. So here, the alpha <coughs> is meeting an epsilon and yoda. So the alpha and the epsilon are not identical. Okay? So what do you do in this case? You contract these, contract these two vowels. And then if there is any yoda hanging out, it will subscript. So what happens when alpha and epsilon meet? <coughs> it becomes long alpha. And the yoda will subscript underneath. So our example, aga pa plus epsilon iota. Okay, so the alpha meets the epsilon iota, these two contract, they become long alpha, and the iota comes along and says, I will subscript under you, and we're left with agapa. We'll go ahead and put our circumflex. Smooth breathing. Okay, so that's how that will look there. Agapa. So that's third singular. He, she, it loves. <coughs> Okay, uh, in the second example, we have uh, an epsilon meeting the Omicron Upsilon diphthong. These are also not identical to each other as they were up here. And so the epsilon and the Omicron are going to contract. What do they become? Become Omicron Upsilon, right? And then in, in the case of Upsilon hanging out, it falls off at the end. So... Um, we don't have an upsilon subscript, do we? Could you imagine putting a little <coughs> upsilon underneath there? That'd be kind of funky. All right. So our example here is from uh, poieo with third person plural form. So poi, e, and then we get usi. Okay. So e plus u. These two will contract, and they become u, and the, 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 the final upsilon will fall out. So poi, u, and the circumflex. Poi, you see. Poi, you see. They are doing, or they do. All righty. So um, that's, uh, that's basically the contractions. Point number eight in mounts just says contract verbs contract as if the true personal endings are those visible in the present active indicative. So I, I, I've taught you the real personal endings, but the contract verbs are behaving as if the resultant endings are the way things really are. So the contract vowel is interacting with these resultant endings that we've learned. Okay, now the last thing in the chapter is to just uh, work out the contract verbs. Uh, was there a question? Okay, so we can see the forms in action here. So what are we going to do? Let's, um, let's jot down, first of all, what we expect to join with these contract uh, verb stems. Remember, my, my contract vowels are a, e, and omicron, right? And whenever I find a contract verb in the lexicon or in my vocabulary list, they will always end with the contract vowel plus the omega. <coughs> so I like to refer to these verbs as the ah uh oh, eh oh, and uh oh <laughs> verbs because they seem to cause a lot of trouble. Ah uh oh, eh oh, and uh oh. That form of these contract verbs is artificial. You remember when we talked about the lexical form being the present active indicative first person singular form. That is true of almost every verb you'll meet. Almost every verb you meet and find in a lexicon, the lexical form will be the present active indicative first person singular form. But not so with contract verbs. This is a contrived form to tell you that this is a contract verb. It is not the real deal first person singular form. Let me. Let me tell you why I say that. If you take agapa and we want to do the first person singular, we're going to be adding o to that. Agapao. Well, alpha, the stem vowel, 
is going to interact with the omega, and there's going to be a contraction here. And what do omicrons and omegas do with anything they meet? They become omega. They contract to omega. So the alpha and the omicron together will become omega with a circumflex over it. So it's going to become agapo. That's the real first person singular form of the present active indicative. Agapo. Not agapao. But your lexical form is, in fact, agapao. Agapao. You will never see a Greek speaker well, you never hear a Greek speaker anyway, uh, use that in a real sentence to say, I love, okay? It'll always be agapo. It'll always be the contracted form, okay? That a-o ending is to tell you there is a contract vowel here. And so you should expect all the crazy contract uh, verb contractions to occur with, with forms here, okay? So agapo, agapo, I love. Uh, if I want to say aga, I, uh, uh, you love, it's agapa ace, right? And so now we're going to have some contraction going on. What's going to happen here? The alpha and the epsilon are going to contract, right? What do those become? They become a long alpha. And what happens to the iota? It subscripts. And then my sigma will still be at the end, so I get agapas with a, with a circumflex over it. Agapas, so you love. Next, I have agapa and then third singular, a, right? And the same thing's going to happen. Alpha and epsilon will contract. They become a long alpha, the iota subscripts. So I'm left with agapa, agapa. He, she, or it loves. We love. Agapa, connecting vowel, omicron, and then personal ending, men. Agapa, a men, becomes aga what? Alpha and omicron contract and become, ah, yes, they become omega, right? Aga pomen, aga pomen. We love. Agapa, and then you, plural, eh, te. Alpha, epsilon, contract and become long alpha, agapate. I always think of the word part party when I hear that, agapate. All right, and then last, they love, agapa plus usi with that movable new, right? Agapa usi. What's going to happen here? Alpha and omicron will contract and what omega. yes omicrons and omegas are very strong they beat up everything and be become the omega so the, that's going to become omega what happens to the remaining upsilon yeah it drops out and so we're left with agaposi agaposi so they love okay so those are your forms so let's read them together. Repeat after me. Agapo, I love. Agapas, you love. Agapa, he, she, or it loves. Now, you don't see the iota that you normally see for third person singular as a real iota at the end, but you do see it subscripted. Okay? It slid under that long vowel. And that was one of our rules, uh, for nouns anyway, back when we were learning noun rules, right? Iota subscripts under long vowels, if possible. Now, for uh, we love, everybody, agapomen. Y'all love agapate. agapate. And they love agaposi. agaposi. All right. So what about poi eo? That's my lexical form for to do or to make. Yes. So yes. does that upsilon drop out um, kind of like the yoda does, or does the omega consume the upsilon? So um, whenever you have an upsilon as the end of the diphthong and a contract vowel coming up in front of it, the contract vowel and the first vowel of the diphthong will contract, and if there's a remaining upsilon, it will fall out. If there's a remaining iota, it will subscript. Okay. <coughs> 
Okay, so poi et o, I do, I do. What's going to happen here? Poi et o. When you get epsilon and omega meeting, who wins this battle? Omega. Omega and omicron convert everything to omega unless it's one of the first rules, right? So poi et o becomes poi o. Poi o. So again, I do, the first person singular, present active indicative, is not ever poi et o. It's really poi o when I've applied the contraction. Poi et o is a fake, fake form. It's not real. Poyo? Poyo. That's right. Yeah, el pollo loco. All right. Okay. Um, now, poya is my stem, and to that, for the second singular, we're adding ace. So what's going to happen here? I have an epsilon meeting an epsilon iota. These are identical, so we simplify, right? So the epsilon is going to, one of the epsilons is going to fall out. So we'll go ahead and get rid of that. And what do you get? You just get epsilon iota. And then I'm going to put a circumflex over that. So epsilon iota sigma. Poi ace. Poi ace. Okay? Now, for the third person singular, we get the same thing, except the sigma's not there. Poi a plus a becomes poi a. Right? So he, she, or it does or makes. Poi a. We do, we make, poie a for my connecting vowel, men. What's going to happen with the epsilon meeting the omicron here? What does that become? Ooh, that's right. It becomes omicron epsilon. So we'll just jot that over here. Poyumen, poyumen. And then, poye, is it just te at the end for y'all? What comes before the personal ending? Yeah, this epsilon here is not the connecting vowel. It's part of the verb stem. So I have a connecting vowel. And the e, e contracts to what? Yeah, epsilon plus epsilon becomes epsilon iota. Okay? So go back here. It is the second rule. Epsilon epsilon becomes epsilon iota here, right? So poie ete becomes poi ete. I'm going to put an iota there. Poie ete. Poie ete. And then uh, they <coughs> do or make is poi e u c. Movable new. What do we have here? We have an epsilon interacting with the diphthong whose first vowel is not the same as the epsilon. So what do we do? We're, well, yep, we're going to contract the first two and then we're going to drop the epsilon. So what does epsilon omicron become? <coughs> It becomes oo, that's right. So poi, oo, and then the upsilon dro drops out, and I'm left with c. So poi u c, and then the movable noun poi u c. Okay. So let's read the forms, everybody. Poyo, I do. Poyes, you do. Poye, he she or it does. Poyumen, we do. Poyete, y'all do, and Poyusin. They do. All right, and then last, but certainly not least, is the form play rao. Play rao. Uh, again, the lexical form is a contrived, fake, phony form, but that it does indicate the omicron stem vowel for the verb, contract vowel. Play ra. And to this, we are adding all of our forms. So if I add omicron, and omega, what, uh, what's going to be the result here? These become omega. Very good. So play 
row. Okay, I fulfill, play row. Uh, you fulfill, or you fill, play ra, ace. What's going to happen here? This was one of our miscellaneous rules, right? You go back up. It was under B. Omicron, Epsilon, Iota become Oi. So that's what we're dealing with, right? Omicron, Epsilon, Iota become Oi, and then there'll be a Sigma there. So play Royce. Play Royce. And then Third singular, he, she, or it fills or fulfills is the same thing, but with no sigma. Play ra a becomes play roy. Okay. We fulfill. Play ra amen. What does play ra amen become? Omicron, omicron. What's the contraction for this? What's that? Omicron Upsilon, yes. So, ooh. Play Rumen. Play Ra, and y'all, eh, te. What happens to Omicron Epsilon? That becomes Omicron Upsilon as well, doesn't it? Play Rute. Play Rumen. Play Rute. And then play Ra with Usi. Becomes what? I have an Omicron followed by an Omicron Upsilon. These are identical, so they do what? They simplify, right? We get rid of one of the two doubled ones, so we'll get rid of this one, and we'll put a circumflex here. Play Ru C. Play Ru C. And we'll go ahead and stick our movable new here. They fill or fulfill. Okay? So, Looking at the clean copy on Mounts' textbook, we can read these together. <coughs> Page 143, everybody. Play row, I fill. Play Royce, you fill. Play Roy, he, she, or it fills. Play Rumen, uh, we fill. Play Rute, y'all fill. And play Rusi, they fill. All righty. Very good. Let's just read the vocab together, vocab words on page 145 and 46, and we'll, we'll then uh, take a quick break and go over the homework. Okay? Everybody, agapao. Agapao. Agapao, I love or cherish. Uh, daimonion. daimonion is a demon. Hmm. Zeteo. So I seek, desire, try to obtain. So my, my stem... It's zeta. So this is an epsilon contract verb. Agapao is agapa for the stem, so it's an alpha contract verb. La leo. So I speak or say. Oida. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. Kaleo. Yes. I skipped over. They had the same ending, didn't they? So kaleo, everybody. Kaleo. I call. Name or invite. And uh, there's that F-looking thing. That's a digamma that's at the end of the stem. So technically, kaleo looks like a contract verb. It's not. And that's why when we get a little bit further along and we start to see more contract verbs and how they behave, we're going to see typical behaviors for contract verbs. And sometimes kaleo is going to do something different. And this is why. It's not a true contract verb. OK, la leo. So I speak or say. Oida. Oida. I know or understand. Um, this form is technically a perfect tense verb that is always used with present time semantics. And, um, and we don't know the perfect form yet, so you don't really know why the forms are what they are. But he gives you the paradigm for it. Oida, oidas, oide, oidem, and oidate, and oidasi. How would you say I don't understand? I don't understand. Ukoida. Ukoina. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you put u, and if there's a vowel, you add the, the kappa. Yeah, <laughs> yes. <just> Ukoida. <laughs> right. Like, no comprendo was the first thing you learned in Spanish, wasn't it? Yo no comprendo. Okay. Uh, hatan. 
hatan, whenever, a pleon, so larger or more. Now notice, I have pleon and pleon. Uh, what do we have here? This is a two-termination adjective that is comparative, okay? Large is the normal form, what would be called the positive, and the comparative is pleon, larger. But the first form always covers which genders? Masculine and feminine. The second form covers neuter. All right, and then play ra'o. So I fill, fulfill, or complete. Next, poya'o, I do or make, and te ra'o, I keep, guard, or observe. There you go.